If you're watching this video, you probably already know that I offer Isana Walker doll making kits. This video is to give you a few tips for using my kits, great information that I think you'll find really helpful. I offer the Isana Walker doll making kits for people that want to try making their own Isana Walker reproduction doll, but don't want to take my full-fledged uh, Isana Walker doll making class. That class involves sculpting and making your own molds and making a cloth, press cloth head for the dolls. Um, the Isana Walker doll making kit comes with a composition head and an instruction book and patterns. These classes and kits are things that I offer in addition to the um, historically accurate press cloth Isana Walker dolls that I make and sell fully finished. If you order a kit, you would get a composition head and an instruction book. And in the instruction book you get patterns and a full set of, of how-tos for everything from the doll's body right through how to paint and then how to make all the clothing. It comes with uh, patterns for not only the body, but a chemise, pantalettes, a petticoat, uh, a second wool petticoat, and two different styles of dresses. Now, you do have an option when you order the kit. The regular kit just comes with the unpainted head so that you can paint the head yourself. If you don't feel confident enough to do your own painting, you can order a custom painted head at an additional cost. And um, I will paint it with your choice of light or dark complexion, your choice of hairstyle, and um, to a certain extent, how much aging that you would like on the doll. Now, let's get right on to the tips. Um, the first thing I'd like to mention is when you get your head, if you order the unpainted head, it will be wrapped in bubble wrap and it will have this little tag on the outside of it that will tell you to please be very careful and not drop these heads. This is a paper mache like composition material. It is quite sturdy for uh, use as a doll head, but like any paper mache or china doll head, it will break. So you don't want to drop it from a great height and you don't want to crush it. Um, it's, it's a nice head and you will need to clean the seam lines, which is just like cleaning ceramic greenware. Now, if you've chosen to order a pre-painted head, the head will be already finished for you and it will come completely painted and cleaned and ready to go. The only thing that it won't have on it is the varnish. I don't varnish them so that you can choose the type of varnish you would like to put on the paint or choose not to varnish it at all. But the thing is you want to get the head, the arms, and the legs all matching. And so I don't want to put a finish on there and then have you uh, not be able to match it when you make your arms and legs. Inside your kit, there is this handy dandy little chart that gives you the actual measurements for real Isana Walker dolls. And that's great, but I just like to point that this out to everybody. This measurement on the uh, shoulders. Don't try to stuff the body to meet that measurement. That is a measurement around the whole outside of the doll once it's, once it's completely made. And those measurements vary greatly. The reason for this is that the real Isana Walker dolls are made with a stuffed body and then 
there is a separate piece of cloth that is sewn onto the press cloth head and pulled down on top of the body with extra stuffing underneath. If you're going with the kit method, you will not be doing this and you do not want to try to stuff the body as firmly as the finished shoulder measurement would be because you'll never be able to get it up inside of the composition head. And if you press too hard and, and try to force it, then you're going to risk cracking your composition. Now, this head is, um, been, has been put on top of the stuffed body. You'll notice how loosely this is stuffed in here. And you will be putting a second skin over the top of this so that when she's finished, she's going to look like uh, the real Isanas are made. You're not going to see this shoulder plate. You don't want to see that because that does not show in the real dolls. Now, you do want some fabric to come out the sides of this shoulder plate because you want to be able, when you sew the arms on, to sew onto the fabric. Now, you may have a little extra, and if you want, you can tuck that in to make it custom fit and then whip stitch that if you'd like to have less sticking out on the sides and that's fine but you but you are going to need a little bit of fabric there to sew those arms to because you don't want the whole weight of the arm pulling down on just the second skin you want to actually be able to attach it to the body now a word about when to attach your head to your body I actually prefer to paint the heads after they're on the body. If you want, you can certainly paint it unattached and just set it on your table and paint it. That works. But I find it's easier to get the cleaned head attached, glued onto the body, and then I can stuff it inside a canning jar. For a paint stand that makes a great stand and that's one of my handy dandy little hints i tell all of my students that it's cheap you probably have one around your house it doesn't have to be an actual canning jar it can be like a spaghetti jar or something anything glass that is going to be heavy enough to hold the doll upright and give you a great painting stand and it's going to be so much easier than trying to paint the heads off the body because then you'll be able to turn the whole thing around. You won't have to worry about wet paint. The problem is when you paint directly on the table, you, you can't really swivel it all that well. And the other thing I need to say is these heads, they are molded directly from a mold taken from a real Isana Walker doll. That means that there is going to be more shoulder plate. It's longer in the front than it is in the back, and so they don't really sit all, all that well because they really aren't meant to just sit on the table. They're meant to sit right on the doll. So that's why I really advocate attaching the head to the body before painting it. Now, as I was telling you about the how you want this to be very lightly stuffed, Another little hint I would like to give you is if you have any doubts about how much stuffing you should put up in there, then I suggest that you do not sew the bottom of the body closed until after you've got the head attached. Now, what you want to do is you're going to have your body, and this is going to be very lightly stuffed up here. You're going to already have your dowel pin through the back to act as the backbone and that's going to go up inside the head all the way up in there and um, you can actually stuff a little stuffing up in there too if you would like that will that would be good um, you don't absolutely have to but it's a nice touch and then and i would stuff that very lightly and i would use something like um, a pair of hemostats or else you could use a chopstick or a dowel pin to lightly push your stuffing up in there. And then you're going to 
fit this in. Now, as I was saying, just be careful when you slip the body up inside the shoulder plate that you, uh, you know, don't put any stress on the composition head. It'll fit right up in there. Now, I realize that when you use like a china doll head, there's a much bigger opening in there. But that's because that was designed for to, to be sewn on differently. And this was taken directly from an actual antique Isana Walker doll. And I wanted to give you that full shoulder molded on there so that when you dress her, it will still look the same. And I didn't want to cut into the to the clay to make it wider because then you're going to lose a lot of that shoulder area and your clothing just isn't going to look right. Now, after you have this on here and glued in place and everything and the glue is set up, then you can sew this seam closed. That will allow you to, to add or um, remove stuffing. Now, if you're confident that you've got this loosely enough stuffed, you can go ahead and sew this shut before you put that up inside the shoulder plate. That's just fine, and that's what the directions say. But since some people have been having a little bit of trouble deciding how much stuffing to put up in this top of the shoulder area, I wanted to mention that this is an option that you could consider. And then after uh, the doll is all painted and the paint is dry and you have done varnish if you just if you think you're going to varnish then you'll be adding your second skin now this is an all cloth doll but she does have her second skin in place so that's why I'm showing her to you and you will put that second skin on and that comes up over the shoulder plate and gets glued in place Isana's original dolls uh, some of them were glued and some of this some of this edge was stitched um, it just depends on the doll but obviously since you're going to be working with a composition head you're going to have to glue this in place and that's fine I recommend Fabri-Tac you'll find that in your um, materials list in your kit and it's great. It's specifically for fabric and it glues fabric to all kinds of other items and um, it works terrific for gluing not only your head to the body but your body covering to the shoulder plate. And actually those are my tips. This is a head that broke uh, coming out of the mold. It, it got dropped on the floor of my studio. So you can see that if you drop it from, you know, a, a high distance, it will go ahead and break. So treat these heads like you would a ceramic item, uh, like your favorite coffee cup or your favorite teacup uh, or your favorite antique or paper mache doll. They're sturdy and they, uh, the finish on this composition looks similar to the cloth dolls once it's painted. So that's why I like it rather than high fired china porcelain or bisque. I like that look. You want to get that same look for the finished paint, but um, do to handle them with care. So. If anybody has any questions or uh, needs a little help once they get their kit, you can go ahead and contact me. And the kits can be purchased online through my website at sweetremembrance.com. Thank you. Bye.